Yes, Prabhu, you are on. <clears throat> Hare Krishna. We'll start prayers. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kada Mahyam Dadati Swa Padantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrachatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Varita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Preshtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyabadi Paschatya Deshatarine Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurat Vishe Namaha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vranda Vaneshwari Prashabhano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpataru Pyascha Kripa Sindhudhya Evacha Padita Nam Pavane Pyo Vaishnave Pyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Prapanna Parichataya Totra Vetrai Kapanaye Nana Mudraya Krishnaya Gita Mrita Duhe Namaha Hare Krishna, welcome all devotees for our uh, Bhagavad Gita discussions in Bhakti Shastri course. We are studying the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita titled as Karma Yoga. So before we start the study, uh, I just wanted to tell a few statements. The conditioned soul who is in this material world has no uh, valid means to understand absolute truth than Shabda Praman. That's the only uh, uh, tangible means for conditioned soul. Understanding this, we should take to the study of um, Shabda Pramana, uh, especially the foremost scriptures in our Sampradaya, that is Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Charitamrit, uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Upadesha Amrit, Ishopanishad, all the books in this uh, course also, uh, in a proper mood. The books should be studied following in the um, explanations and uh, footsteps of great acharyas. Uh, that is very, very important. We cannot understand supreme absolute truth by our intellectual capacity. <laughs> so what Srila Prabhupada has given is the essence, the uh, quintessence of the whole spiritual uh, truths. And it is made so practicable uh, by Acharyas like Srila Prabhupada. So when we read Srila Prabhupada's purports, uh, what Srila Prabhupada gives uh, as the explanations are most uh, important. Uh, they are most relevant. In fact, they have to be taken as our life and soul. Uh, in this mode, we will take to this study of the scripture, Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Uh, when we study something, say, suppose any book, <laughs> when we study something, that means the topic of study is subordinate to our intelligence. But when we study scripture, that is not the case. <laughs> uh, 
it is not that we are studying uh, bhagavad gita as we study say physics or chemistry or something like that because there um, we are acquiring the knowledge we are showing our dominion over that knowledge but in, in studying the scriptures the mood is to uh, understand appreciate and serve uh, the supreme lord and serve the purpose of the scripture that is devotional service <clears throat> and we should also um, explain and uh, share in that mood only so in this uh, spirit let us embark on this so we are in this third chapter uh, the third chapter titled karma yoga had the first important section uh, very important section for practicing devotees <laughs> can someone name what is that section which we are currently studying the first 10 verses of third chapter yeah, i think last session i showed it and if you would like to recollect karma yoga is better than gyan yoga okay karma yoga is better than gnana yoga yes that is right but we see uh, by objective uh, understanding analysis that gnana yoga is higher than karma yoga so why is krishna telling here that karma yoga is better than gnana yoga anyone can explain with whatever shlokas we should... because like we are acting depending upon our guna that is the reason krishna is telling that karma yoga is better than gnana and okay. also we will be clearing some of our uh, vasanas mm -hmm. okay because it will not result in entanglement meditation is required yeah, for gyana uh, yes. ha the, the last statement one mataji told can that repeat it it doesn't cause any entanglement to reactions work yeah entanglement in fact nana yoga also there is no entanglement purification is required for gyana yoga and correct and one more exciting. point last time we discussed that nature of soul is to perform some activity i mean like uh, we should be in, soul needs engagement engage all this other thing correct correct yes that's true so as we see in the yoga ladder last time we saw that uh, <clears throat> there is a necessary purification needed for rising from one one rung of the ladder to the higher rung so to rise to gnana yoga what is the purification expected there should be detachment even from the actions huh? yeah surely in nishkama karma yoga there is detachment from reactions of work but there is still attachment to the type of work or activity being performed when that attachment also goes away huh? when that uh, renunciation dawns in by stable practice of duties then one is qualified to take nana yoga so last time we had seen this so lord specifically says this in the fourth shloka arjuna thought no action no reaction but lord told even if you don't act you will get reaction Uh, even if you don't act you will get reaction means now material actions if you don't perform still that does not mean you will not get reaction you will still get reaction because there is internally not purified heart which will impel a person to act you know sooner or later it will impel a person so in the fifth shloka now today we onwards we are seeing the fifth shloka nahi kashchit kanam api jatu tishtadya karma krit karyate hyavash karma sarva prakriti jair gunai who would like to read okay satya dev prabhu yeah hare krishna prabhu ji yes <clears throat> uh, text 5 uh, everyone is forced to act helplessly uh, okay, helplessly according to the qualities he has acquired from the mode of material nature therefore no one can refrain from doing something not even for a moment mm. so everyone is forced to act helplessly avashaha avashaha matlab you know it's it's helpless vasha means control avasha means uncontrollably one is acting avashaha karma kshanam api even one moment also he cannot 
stay without acting one is always acting now some of the uh, so called under, uh, scholars of vedas or uh, shastras they say uh, a jiva acts when he is in the material world in the conditioned state but when he is liberated he merges into the absolute and he uh, becomes uh, non functional uh, he doesn't act but here shila prabhupad in the very first line of the purport he refute, he tells it very addressing that very point it is not a question of embodied life but it is the nature of the soul to be always active it's the nature of the soul it's not that because we are in this material body that's why we are impelled to act no it's not that just the modes are forcing to act no the nature of the soul itself is to act Uh, so the spirit uh, okay prabhupada writes let's read that without the presence of spiritual soul uh, spirit soul material body cannot move so body is a dead vehicle which is moved by the spirit soul and spirit soul is actually active and it cannot stop even for a moment uh, so little below in contact with material energy spirit soul acquires material modes and to purify the soul from such affinities it is necessary to engage in the prescribed duties enjoined in the shastras so prabhupada used to say that uh, the the deceased person he acts he also works he also moves his bodily limbs but that is producing pain for him uh, uh, he is doing that but it is producing pain for him because he is deceased now this does not mean once the disease is cured he will not work or he will not act surely he will act and that time the actions he performs will not be painful in fact they will be uh, making him more happy bliss producing so the diseased life is conditioned life wherein the activities which are controlled by material modes will give one suffering and when that is purified so that's why now prabhupada mentions the prescribed duties are given to purify that uh, or the to cure that disease of conditioned life uh, and when once disease is cured then he performs activities which will uh, make him uh, happy that's the natural state so soul is always active so prabhupada would uh, would uh, say if, okay the next line is interesting if the soul is engaged in his natural function of krishna consciousness whatever he is able to do is good for him so there are two types of activities the jiva uh, in the material world performs one is the activity which he performs uh, which we can call as material activity and the other side he performs the activity called spiritual activity now the goal of spiritual activity the spiritual activity is framed in such a manner uh, to purify one from material inclinations or material uh, impurities uh. so when one gets purified uh, so he is he is acting on spiritual platform uh. so when one is doing spiritual uh, activities he has developed that affinity for performing those spiritual activities then that is the goal of in fact doing uh, the duties the duties which are given in the vedas are uh, to purify a person and to make him act on the soul platform that is devotional service now if a person takes to devotional service platform when he is in conditioned state that is all all the all the more good <laughs> so prabhupada writes here if soul is engaged in natural function of krishna consciousness whatever he is able to do you know so he may do little spiritual activity he may fall away again uh, but still whatever he does is good for him that is counting in his eternal progress uh, progress in his eternal uh, spiritual journey uh, so that journey he is marching ahead like that day we were talking walking or running on a treadmill and walking or stumbling uh, on a uh, plain ground walking ahead so what is advancement <laughs> so one may be running on the treadmill treadmill means that which is stationary on which one runs it doesn't move anywhere right? so one is running on the treadmill that means one is performing the duties very nicely but if he has doesn't have a spiritual consciousness then uh, he he may be 
little successful or uh, you know satisfied in this current life because he's following some vedic directions but nonetheless in the next life he'll have to do those again and that will be a repeated uh, you know cycle of birth and death and birth and death but if one is embarking even if he's making baby steps uh, falling again again trying to you know rise and walk on the plain ground then he's making progress so one should not uh, point out that this person is falling <laughs> so prabhupad would say at least he is progressing uh, what is the progress of uh, being on a treadmill so like that so he quotes a very important shloka in this regard from bhagavatam which means that if one someone takes to krishna consciousness even though he may not follow the prescribed duties in shastras or execute devotional service properly huh? and even though he may fall down from the standard there is no loss or evil for him but if he carries out all injunctions for purification in shastras what does it avail if he is not krishna conscious now this shloka does not justify one to act uh, Uh, according one it does not justify one to act contrary to shastras huh? so one should follow the duties huh? and but keep the goal of following the duties that is krishna consciousness in mind so prabhupad is telling about uh, the goal of sanyasa huh? or any purificatory process sanyasa or any purificatory process is to help reach ultimate goal of becoming krishna conscious so there is there is sanyasa coming in this uh, shloka earlier also which will come in the uh, shlokas little later also so the sanyasa we have we were talking about it uh, in the last session um, in the traditional or in the uh, gradual uh, evolution according to the vedic system the sanyasa is for one who has uh, risen to the gnana yoga plan so because there is karma sanyasa he has renounced from all his uh, duties to the social system so that is at the gnana yoga platform now krishna is advising arjuna that do not artificially situate yourself in the sanyasa platform because purification has not happened now that's the uh, tone in which it is used <clears throat> now sanyasa in devotional service is different last time we were talking about it chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, he took sanyas uh, and uh, the vishnu sahasranama glorifies uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu's uh, descent as davatara which took sanyasa sanyasa kritchava shanta uh, uh, nishta shanti parayana so that lord who came in the kali yuga and he took sanyas <laughs> sanyasa krit shama shanta so uh, he took sanyas chaitanya mahaprabhu for a very specific purpose and that purpose is uh, is is very much pure devotional service <laughs> he took it to um, help propagate krishna consciousness and shri prabhu pad took sanyas uh, uh, and uh, he awarded sanyas and in his con we see many uh, sanyasis uh, <clears throat> renounced out of people Uh, so the goal in sanyasa in vedic system is to attain moksha but in the devotional service it is to please krishna so that should be kept in mind and uh, there are many things about sanyasa and krishna consciousness we will we'll discuss that as it goes ahead uh, yes any comment or question yes prabhu ji uh... now just listening your commentary on atma the soul so just getting some question prabhu ji so uh, we are trying to uh, purify um, whatever is there around the soul like a mind a mind is completely not pure so buddhi is not completely pure as process of this chanting as part of the devotion service we are trying to purify our soul right prabhu ji Yeah, means purify soul means yeah yeah okay go ahead means go soul ahead. is already pure but around soul uh, 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 there is lot of disturbances okay on on this particular material attachment that is what we are trying to clear here yeah okay so okay. 
uh, but in one of the statement uh, you said like uh, you gave some kind of attributes to soul as well that is where i got bit confused uh, like uh, <clears throat> at one place you said like soul interest okay um, is so and so or something like that you been uh, telling prabhuji initially when we are when okay maybe i'll try to put it the question in the, in a different way initially when we are all there in the spiritual world soul is completely pure okay it doesn't has any attraction so for some reason it has got the attraction for this material world correct so if i understand correctly with your summary we are just going back the reverse way so we are trying to eliminate um, the what is it mind and intellect and then uh, me and then that all these things were turning to krishna so that um, we will not attach to this material body and automatically we will go back to the godhead godhead can we understand in that way prabhu ji so soul has spiritual senses spiritual attributes it also has desires it also thinks feels and wills you know that is the uh, nature or the symptom of consciousness or the soul so when we say that we are uh, purifying soul what we mean is the identification of soul to the material uh, body mind intelligence and the belongings of this body uh, that identification we are purifying uh, we are trying to bring krishna in center we are trying to associate whatever we are attached to as att- attachment to krishna so by that that attachments are false identities are getting purified okay <coughs> it is like we are training soul into the its natural form we can think in that way yeah yes yes okay we were training like how we are training a dog or cat in this very similarly we are training our soul to go to the yeah. natural state yeah 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 so there is a very important uh, explanation in shrimad bhagavatam about the spiritual activities uh the example given by narada muni is that just as the milk uh, if taken more produces some stomach disorders but the same milk in a different form that is curd can cure stomach disorders so material activities when fixed uh, when fixed for uh, the purpose of gratifying oneself as body Uh, they produce disorders <laughs> but when they are uh, focused for serving the lord's interests they actually purify those disorders uh, so how this acts is something very uh, wonderful how the externally looking it's the same activities uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's none other than different form of milk uh, but it has a therapeutic effect uh, shri prabhupada writes that in the purport um this comes in fifth chapter of first canto so this we should uh, make that difference that a devotee also is performing activities and a non devotee also is performing activities huh? so one is getting entangled whereas the other because he is um, his goal is to serve the interest of lord is getting purified you know so that is the way which is considered as the most effective way of purifying uh, from material attachments that's it. Yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes Prabhu. Prabhu Prabhu I'm I'm actually stuck on this line of soul in engaging I mean so engaging soul in natural function of Krishna consciousness how yes. easier how difficult or how to get there engaging the soul in natural in the, in the natural function of KC ah uh. engaging soul in natural function of kc i'm stuck on the word natural function <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah originally soul's function is krishna conscious in that sense it is natural jivera swarupa hai krishnera nityadas in that sense so what yeah. do you mean okay. when you when you say you're stuck like on i thought world? yeah so that's natural function to me naturally the soul should go uh, get into mm. krishna consciousness or is it Correct. a souls yes. natural it is a yeah if you have to naturally get into krishna consciousness how do you do a materialistic practice to get to and na- yeah. make it a natural natural habit basically or are we saying <laughs> that the souls nature is to is is original nature is uh, krishna consciousness correct correct currently 
the unnatural material life has become natural for us okay okay and we have right. forgotten our natural uh, activities natural uh, inclinations of serving krishna all that so that is sounding unnatural for us now <laughs> you know right. that is the illusion that is the false identification of the jiva you know so which uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu called it as uh, pishachi uh, that's a haunted the consciousness you know it's like uh, the the person who is haunted by a ghost he doesn't mm-hmm. act in his um, original met- way <laughs> you know so like that this uh, pishachi of enjoying mentality uh, mm-hmm. you know it's told in chaitanya charitamrita that has haunted uh, that has possessed the jiva uh, in fact the jiva himself has invited it due to which he is acting uh, according to that possessed you know the ghost so that's a very unnatural state um, as shila prabhupad would say you know that uh, krishna consciousness is most natural you don't need to force anything huh? it is not an artificial imposition on uh, either mind or intelligence like that there is one uh, explanation of shila prabhupad about hare krishna maha mantra very nice it is uh, maybe uh, one of you can read it it's it's prabhupad has spoken what is the meaning of hare krishna maha mantra uh, in that he says this hare krishna maha mantra is not an artificial imposition on the mind or intelligence it is the natural uh, activity krishna consciousness is a natural activity of like that. so you are you are uh, pointing out something very uh, you know so uh, disastrous or you know <laughs> in one sense very uh, embarrassing for a condition so how the natural krishna consciousness he has lost exactly yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and Thank also, you. just to add one point, Prabhuji, initially it may not look like a, um, natural. Maybe after practicing to some extent, it may turn as a natural, yeah. if correct. I understand correctly. Yeah. Okay. Correct, correct. Yes, true. You're right. Sorry for Prabhuji. Okay. Sorry for it. No, no, wonderful. Good. Now, let's uh, take it ahead. Srila Prabhupada. Um, okay, we were in the shloka number. Five. Let's go to six. Now, Srila Prabhupada, uh, sorry, Lord Krishna says, okay, if you are artificially becoming inactive, Arjuna, you will end up becoming hypocrite. You are telling that you don't want to act. Huh? You don't want reaction, that's why you don't want to act. But the soul's very nature is to act, first point. Second is, uh, if one is not purified within and he stops action what will he be called what will he become eventually he is called hypocrite that is sixth shloka karmendriyani samyamya ya aste manasa smaran indriyarthan vimudhatma mithyacharasa uchyate read one who restrains uh, the senses of action but those mind mind dwells on the sense sense objects certainly delude himself and is called a pretender pretender karmendriyani samyamya karmendriyas we have karmendriyas huh? like uh, you know it's told mouth huh? two hands legs anus and genitals these are the five karmendriyas there are gnanendriyas huh? eyes ear nose tongue and skin these are gnanendriyas so in the um, as we were talking in the sanyasa karma sanyasa a person is actually uh, shut his karmendriyas he doesn't act by his karmendriyas to gain something he doesn't use those karmendriyas for that he may use it like you know he may lift water he may drink water he may eat something that is different than endeavoring to gain uh, for his enjoyment so karmendriyani samyamya so samyam is controlling so he is not acting by karmendriyas but ya aste manasa smaran deliberately he is thinking by his mind about indriyarthan objects of senses that is enjoyment such a person is foolish vimudhatma and what is he called mithya achara sauchyate 
मिथ्या मीन्स फॉल्स फॉल्स एक्शन फॉल्स एक्टर और इट्स कॉल्ड प्रिटेंडर चीटर सो वन थिंग वी शुड नॉट हियर या आज थे माना सास मरन इज डेलिबरेट एक्शन डेलिबरेट कंटेम्पलेशन और एंजॉयमेंट ओके सो इन द स्टेज ऑफ साधक uh one is gain one is trying to force it forcibly control his senses and engage them in krishna consciousness sometimes by the very uh, pravaha of the earlier samskaras uh, uh, the that gust you uh, know forces a person to do something which he did not wanted to do and later he realizes and comes to senses uh, so there he is not intentionally doing and lord krishna will tell about this later in the ninth chapter also so uh, here what is talked here is not an um, incidental or accidental uh, uh, metal fell it accidental uh, or by the force of modes one one is forced to think or act from what is told here is a deliberate jaan bujh ke karna really plans <laughs> that's called uh, mithya chara so prabhupad tells Uh, very nicely about such a false uh, meditators uh, in the purport there are many pretenders who refuse to work in krishna consciousness but make a show of meditation while actually dwelling upon the mind within the mind upon sense enjoyment so they may speak lofty philosophy uh, they may bluff so much but they are actually greatest cheaters uh, so for sense enjoyment one can act in any capacity of social order but if he follows the rules and regulations of a particular status he can make gradually progress in purifying that place so as we were talking earlier performance of duties uh, matures one in renunciation matures one in detachment uh, and it also dawns uh, knowledge and realization so that has been the steady um, you know stress or emphasis uh, in in by lord krishna especially in this first six chapters that will come repeatedly so prabhupad says little below one who does not uh, practice uh, sorry he who makes a show of being a yogi while actually searching for objects of sense gratification you know must be called the greatest cheater even though he sometimes speaks of philosophy his knowledge has no value because very nice because the effects of a such a sinful man's knowledge are taken away by the illusory energy of the lord such a pretender's mind is always impure and therefore his show of yogic meditation has no value whatsoever so uh when one takes uh, to the position of uh, instructing krishna consciousness at least he should be a sincere sadhaka uh, he should be honest uh. so what is in one's capacity of uh, realization he should instruct he should not instruct more than that and he can present scriptural um, you know quotes as quoted by shastras or as quoted by our gurus but one should not falsely put himself as if he is risen above those anarthas so shila prabhupad would often say uh, they are not teachers they are cheaters <laughs> and such people are many yeah? uh, we can always see uh, so many of them in the media actually and uh, it is not long that soon they are uh, discovered and that becomes a great a loss of uh, faith in the public so what shila prabhupad is telling here is such false and deliberate uh, prabhupad uses the word searching for sense enjoyment in the garb of renunciation so that should not be done so once shila prabhupad used to uh, say he said it in one morning walk there was one person Uh, who used to stay in calcutta proper had seen him he used to every day in the day time he would wear saffron robes and he would go 
and uh, sit near some temple and collect <laughs> some money and like that <laughs> maybe give some blessings or so and he would come in the evening and he would change it over <laughs> and he would wear a regular civil dress karmi dress and he would live life like that so that renunciation or renounced order was used uh, um, what do you say uh, made business on the faiths of people you know sand people and by that faith is also destroyed in the whole society so what society needs is honest uh, sadhu sons so that is a great need and shila prabhupad was that one great sadhu who showed <laughs> how uh, really practice of renunciation should be yes so now this this lord is advising that do not be artificially inactive huh? if you do that then you will become hypocrite better you engage in uh, uh, prescribed duties that's the emphasis here yeah any comment or question shrinivas prabhu i think giriraj prabhu that one is no 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 comments to ji uh, i am in a queue to read <laughs> sorry okay. i i have a question prabhu ji question or comment prabhu ji so okay uh, this is getting uh, like at least when i'm hearing this this is getting scared as well prabhu ji because okay, at least me calling as a krishna conscious okay doing chanting but still not able to control the senses so how that will be treated by krishna prabhu ji Mm. he will be treating that as a great offense right mm. yeah 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 one should be careful uh, there there are two three aspects here <clears throat> one is uh, one should have a sincere desire to rise above the conditionings first thing that's very important one should have that sincere desire like that day i think one of the devotees only told uh, i don't remember who was it we were seeing that yamuna charya's shloka which said that um, whenever he is uh, practicing krishna consciousness he is delighting in krishna consciousness so much that whenever there are earlier remembrances of sense enjoyment comes in his mind he spits at those thoughts you know that that is the famous verse so one indication in that shloka is that such desires are coming even to a great yati like yamuna charya but what is it doing with that desire that is very important and that is what distinguishes a hypocrite and a honest sadhaka you know honest uh, devotee yeah. so the devotee he knows you know there are so many verses in bhagavatam especially in 11th canto <clears throat> the devotee he knows that yes i am struggling to control my senses and actually only lord can control the senses and no matter how much i fall away but i will never leave the lotus feet of lord krishna i will never leave the lotus feet of lord krishna and another thing i will never use devotional service to uh, justify my or do my sinful activities more that will be considered one of the offense is it not naam nod bala yasya hi papa buddhi to use devotional service as a you know <laughs> burning uh, one that burns our sinful reactions and continue doing sinful actions more and more prabhupad would call it as the sunday confession uh, addict mm. <laughs> uh, one who goes and confesses the sins uh, in the place of worship to do sins from the next day thinking that the sins are gone away so one should not uh, use devotional service like that that will be uh, very very disastrous that's a great offense so there should be a sincere desire to rise above conditionings there should be a honest attempt to control the senses uh, and there should be <clears throat> proper guidance uh, uh, there are rules and regulations uh, which are for different levels of um, practice you know the rules and regulations at one level are different from the rules and regulations from the higher level surely shila prabhupada has given the four regulative principles but yet among them there are so many subtleties so one should take guidance and follow the rules and regulations which uh, which are advised for one's level of practice uh, level of realization and in that guidance 
one should keep pushing oneself incremental push you know keep rising above above like that and one should not falsely become so dejected by one's not ability to uh, follow some higher rules and regulations so in that sense one should uh, take to krishna consciousness that attitude is very very uh, favorable there is a shloka in shrimad bhagavatam i would just like to show that just a minute Yeah. This is 11th can. Yeah. I'll just, uh, we will read this one uh, translation. And if there is anything more, we will take it after that. Okay. Uh, may I okay. show the uh, screen, Prabhuji? Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is 11th canto, 20th chapter, 27 to 28. This actually is the uh, shloka which says, what is the qualification for pure devotional service? You know, pure devotional service. So one of you can read this translation. Lord is telling this. To yeah, yeah. Yeah. Translation. Having awakened faith in the narrations of my glories, being this disgusted with all the material activities, knowing that all sense, sense gratifications lead to misery, uh, but still being unable to renounce all sense enjoyment, my devotees should remain happy and worship me with great faith and conviction. Even though he is sometimes uh, engaged in the sense enjoyment, my devotees know that all sense gratification lead to a miserable result, and he sincerely repents such activities. Uh, many things are mentioned here. There is an intellectual conviction in a devotee that all sense gratification leads to misery. Huh? Yet there is a struggle at the level of senses and mind huh? that he is not able to renounce sense enjoyment. Huh? Mm -hmm. So Lord is telling <laughs> in this situation of conflict, yet my devotee should worship me with his heart, <laughs> with great faith and conviction. And that will be the purifying aspect. So one should never think my ability to control or follow rules and regulations will what help me to advance in devotional service. My sincere adherence to activities of devotional service will help me to rise above these conditions. That is the uh, way to control senses. We have studied this in a... Uh, uh, nectar of instruction. What is the way to control senses? Srila Prabhupada says that engage senses in Krishna consciousness. Engage mind in Krishna consciousness. That is the way. And by that, that earlier inclinations and tendencies are getting purified. So, Srila Prabhupada, Lord says here, even though he sometimes uh, falls one, even though he sometimes engaged in sense enjoyment, my devotee knows that all sense gratification leads to miserable result. So there is sincere repentance also. So this uh, actually gives such a hope and it also gives us some direction how to see uh, what is the magnanimity of Lord and how a devotee should be alert and uh, take shelter of Lord sincerely. That is also told here. Okay, this is very nice verse. You can read purport, very nice purport. 11th Canto, 20th chapter, 27 to 28. This is another Gita. This is called Uddhava Gita. <laughs> so, this is very nice. Take it. Hope that clarifies this uh, questions about honesty and hypocrisy. Yes, Prabhuji, I understand that. So, we need to continue devotional services and we need to have a desire. In nutshell, and increase that is a through devotional yes. service. Yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. So we should not be there thinking is that like. Yeah. Got mm -hmm. it. Thank you. Yeah. So there is sincere repentance. There is a sincere adherence to devotional activities, and guidance, which is very very important. That's also an important. Piece. Now, Lord will say that, oh Arjuna, <laughs> so you engage, you act. Uh, in your duties. Do not artificially become inactive. 
यस्वेन्द्रिया मनस निर्जुन कर्मेन्द्रिय कर्म योग असक्त स विशिष्य Yes, Prabhu. On the other hand, if a sincere person tries to control the active sense by the mind and begins karma yoga uh, in Krishna consciousness without attachment, he is by far superior. Yeah. So Lord is telling here, Arjuna, when a person has impurities in heart, for him the most advised thing is karma yoga, not nana yoga. Huh? So Lord is becoming subjective here. so surely gnana yoga is higher than karma yoga according to yoga ladder but when a person's heart is not pure then it is advised to follow one's duties and become stable and gradually that knowledge and renunciation will dawn which eventually will give renunciation so the point is perform duties if a sincere person tries to control active senses by mind and begins karma yoga huh? karma नियम या कर्मेंद्रिय ही कर्म योग कर्म योग होल इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ वर्ण एंड आश्रम इज डिजाइन टू हेल्प अस रीच दिस गोल ऑफ लाइफ वॉट इज दट गोल ऑफ लाइफ टू रीच विष्णु a householder can also reach this destination by regulated service in krishna consciousness for self realization one can live a controlled life as prescribed in the shastras and continue carrying out his business without attachment and in that way make progress a sincere person who follows this method is far better situated than the false pretender and earlier shloka talked about it mithyachara who adopts show bottle spiritualism show bottles and uh, uh, the so called earlier times uh, the, there were so many different color bottles but they all had the same stuff <laughs> so it's a show bottle it's just making the show externally that it is oh it, it seems that the internal substance is greenish or reddish or you know like that but actually it's the bottle color only the external is only like that not the internal Uh, so like that so show bottle of spiritualism uh, the activities look spiritual but internally uh, the in- inclination desires are not spiritual uh, such a uh, show bottle spiritualism to cheat the innocent public next statement is uh, is a very great uh, quote of prabhupad a sincere sweeper in the street is far better than the charlatan meditator who meditates only for the sake of making a living or making a living so charlatan means cheater you know charlatan so uh, in chaitanya mahaprabhu's leela one of the foremost disciples of chaitanya mahaprabhu was rupa goswami so rupa goswami right from his very early age when he was for performing his duties as a grihastha he uh, becomes he, he becomes attracted to lord chaitanya and he starts writing letters to chaitanya mahaprabhu telling that i am feeling so uh, dissatisfied i just want to renounce <laughs> and i i want to join you fully and all like that the chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, he uh, he tells one very nice instruction any of you know would like to complete this okay so he says that do not be a markata vairagi markata vairagi means uh, markata means monkey huh? so monkeys also they live in forest as vairagi lives in forest monkeys don't have any material uh, covering on their body <laughs> you know dress or like that so sanyasis typically in traditionally they were uh, you know actually living without with meager belongings you know we can say in when goswami is also kaupina uh, kanthashrita it stole so uh, externally looking a mo- monkey is also a great vairagi but monkey is jumping from uh, 
tree to tree, having so many vibes, having so many uh, desires to enjoy with its flickering, wandering, restless mind. So Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told, do not be a Markata Vairagi. Uh, that instruction uh, has a great uh, relevance for all sadhakas. And of course, later Rupa Goswami, uh, I think this is Raghunath Das Goswami, actually. Yeah, this is Raghunath Das Goswami. So later Raghunath Das Goswami, he gains mercy of uh, Nityananda Prabhu. And later, uh, he, by his sincere desire, uh, Lord understands that yes, uh, he wants to serve. Then he gives him mercy and he becomes stable in his renunciation. That is a very great pastime to learn. So now Lord, he is continuing, telling that uh, do not be a cheater, uh, trying to artificially renounce. So first reason Lord told why you should perform the duties is that the very nature of soul is to act, whether embodied or liberated. That's the first reason. I think, yeah, first one of the reasons. One another reason Lord told is that even though you don't act, you will still get reactions. That was told in the fourth shloka. Now he told the reason that if you do not act, you will end up becoming hypocrite because the mind is not pure. Better one acts properly. That is duties. Now Lord will tell, even for bodily maintenance, one has to act at the conditional stage. Even to maintain one's body, one has to act. Niyatam kuru karmatvam karma jyayo hya karmana sharira yatra pichate na prasidhyet akarmana. Any other devotee would like to read from here? Yeah. Let me read more. Okay. Srinivas Prabhu can read. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. So perform your prescribed duty for doing so is better than not working. One mm. cannot even maintain one's physical body without work. Uh, so that is that famous uh, instruction in uh, Hitopadesh. Uh -huh. Nahi suptasya simhasya pravishanti mukhe murga udhyame nahi siddhyanti. So what it means is uh, a lion <laughs> was sitting in the forest opening its mouth, thinking that the deer will come and fall inside its mouth. <laughs> but no deer will come and fall in the mouth of a lion, <laughs> which is actually sleeping. Suptasya uh, Simhasya. Prabhupada very funnily says, the deer may come, it may urinate and walk away. <laughs> so no one will, one will have to endeavor to uh, make one's living in this world. So Arjuna, you should perform your activities, that is your duties, to maintain yourself, sharira yatra. So Prabhupada says, so-called renunciation for the purpose of maintenance is never approved by the Lord. So one should not use renounced hardier for maintaining oneself. That's not, not by any religious scripture. After all, one has to maintain one's body and soul together by some work. So work should not be given up capriciously. That means we can, you know, uh, in, a, in an irregular manner, at a premature manner, without purification of materialistic propensities. So anyone who is in the material world is certainly having some impure propensity. So that is sense gratification. That's why one is advised to perform prescribed duties. So Lord is telling. So, so far what Lord has told till sloka number eight is to do Nishkama Karma Yoga. The same uh, thread is following. Perform work uh, without attachments. Perform your duties. And for that, Lord told many reasons. Can someone quickly recollect what are the reasons we saw in these first eight shlokas? Um, why Arjuna should work or fight than renounce fight and go to forest? Anyone would like to recollect what are all the reasons we saw? One is it is Kshatriya Dharma he has to fight. Okay, it is his duty, Dharma, to fight. Mm -hmm. Did we see that in this eight shlokas? 
You're right, Mataji, correct? Um, I'm asking these, these uh, shlokas. First few okay. shlokas. Yeah. In, in action is... Um, okay. Go ahead, Mataji. Nature of soul is to act. So if Arjuna artificially accepts uh, an activity, he'll uh, become a hypocrite. So he has to perform uh, prescribed duties, which is mm. which is dharma. So that is one reason. And uh, uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Yes, yes. Because uh, yes. because Arjuna uh, Arjuna uh. was not yet on the Jnana platform. That is why uh. here Krishna is telling you, please at least perform the prescribed duty. Ha. Uh, okay. You purify yourself by performing the duty. Yes. yes. True. <clears throat> Controlling karma yes. indriyas, uh, but deliberately thinking and contemplating with mind about mm. object of senses. Uh, yes. Such a person is uh, a false uh, pretender or uh, pretender. cheater. Yeah. Should, uh, perform so do this not be of... a pretender, Arjun Krishna is telling. Do not be such a pretender. Like that. Yeah. And uh, merely by abstaining work, uh, he may not be able to achieve perfection. So yeah. before you renunciate, become purified by doing your work and then you can renounce. Uh, that yes. is one of the reasons. Correct, correct. The fourth shloka. Very good. Very good. All of you collected. Yeah, one of the key thing is inaction is almost close to impossible. Whether ah. it is for Arjuna or for anybody. Yes, yes, yes. That's why but Lord no. will say later, the real yeah. inaction or inactivity, a karma, which it actually will come in fourth chapter, you know, karma, a karma, vikarma, that concept comes there, uh, is actually devotional service alone, which is actually activity, but it is done for pleasing God. Now, after discussing first eight shlokas about nishkama karma yoga, you perform your duty for all these reasons. Now, Lord will say, a higher purpose for performing the, these activities. Yeah? It's a drop of bhakti here. <laughs> like there was a drop of bhakti in second chapter. Huh? Matpara. There was a matpara. Fix your consciousness in me. Lord told for the first time, me, mat, he used that word. Now here he will tell, uh, for Vishnu you do it. For yajna you do it. You offer, you do your work for yajna or Vishnu. Work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise, work causes bondage in this material world. Therefore, was good thing. Perform your prescribed duties for easy satisfaction. And in oh. that way, you will always remain free from bondage. Ah, this is the real way to free oneself from reactions or bondage. Don't think by not acting, you will be freed from bondage. But you work for Yajna or Vishnu. Huh? Yajna Vai Vishnu. So that is the real way to uh, purify oneself from bondage. So Prabhupada says in the purport, Yajna means Lord Vishnu or sacrificial performance. All sacrificial performance are also meant for satisfaction of Lord Vishnu. Yajna Vai Vishnu. Same purpose is served whether one performs yajnas or directly serves Lord Vishnu. So direct service of Lord Vishnu involves Navada Bhakti. You know? It's not that one has to hold a yajna ladle uh, to please Lord Vishnu. One can perform Navada Bhakti. Uh, and Prabhupada will later tell also that Sankirtana is the real yajna. So the second paragraph is very nice. Um, one has to work for satisfaction of Vishnu. Any other work done in this world will cause bondage. Either good or evil work. One has to work in Krishna consciousness to satisfy Krishna. While performing such activities, one is in liberated stage. Muktatma, while working, he is liberated. You know, it's not that one has to become liberated only after renouncing. No, uh, while working, while performing the devotional activities uh, in the or duties in the devotional intent uh, in Krishna consciousness, he is liberated. This is the great art of doing work. And in the beginning, this process requires very expert guidance. 
one should therefore act very diligently under the guidance expert guidance of a devotee of lord krishna or under direct instruction of lord krishna himself nothing should be performed for sense gratification but for satisfaction of krishna this practice will not only save one from reaction of work but it will also elevate one to transcendental loving service of lord which will eventually take him to spiritual world so here is another reason why arjuna has to fight to free himself from bondage to fight with the intent to serve lord that will free you from bondage not that you don't fight that will free you from bondage not that so lord is telling here now one may question naturally one may find oh then you know but if i have so many material desires in my heart how can i take to this uh, you know act of working with detachment you know uh, offering the fruits for lord krishna it's very difficult you know so how should i start so that's where lord will tell the very first step of yoga ladder so this is the uh, from shloka number 10 up till you know it goes for some next seven shlokas or so is the yoga ladder this is a concept which is there in the vedas yoga sopana uh, which starts with karma kanda so in the karma kanda method we have discussed yoga letter i think at least twice so far uh, i would like to give a small exercise uh, keeping in mind you know which will give a full birds view of all these yoga rungs so please as you hear uh, these different levels of yoga for next few chapters uh, classify what you hear under these five headings you can note this first is what is the performer of the yoga thinks himself as the first one that is his about his own identity what is the performer of that yoga path thinks himself as it's like for example one example if i have to say karma kanda now karma kanda person knows that he is actually soul but he is in the material body so he has to keep repeatedly taking birth after birth after birth that's his understanding you know but one in karma yoga you know he knows originally he belongs to spiritual world you are getting what what i am saying so like this it it changes <clears throat> now first aspect or factor is what he thinks himself as his identity his sambandha you know now second thing when when we study these yoga paths one can uh, note <clears throat> what is his goal what is his goal is on a practitioner's goal second aspect third is what does he practice what does it mean that he is in karma kanda or karma yoga or gnana yoga ashtanga yoga you know all that what is his practice that's the third one can someone quickly say first three what is the result yes what Not is the performer of yoga what is the ah. destination no 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 not destination we have not come to destination yet what well, there was one aspect of goal goal okay you may what is his goal to... and what does he practice ah. so what is the goal what is the practice and what he thinks himself as okay so far so these four three aspects you saw now fourth aspect you can write uh, what is the elevating aspect or the good part of that yoga path rang say in karma kanda what is the good part in that yoga rang karma kanda that is practice following vedic authority is it not that's the best part that's what elevates the person actually uh, which one should one must do if he is telling he is a karma kandi he should be following activities according to vedas uh, so that is karma kanda so like that every every path has one distinguishing elevating aspect which we should keep in mind 
Now, second one, uh, sorry, the fifth one, the last one, is what is the possible trap? What is the possible trap? Like, you know, in Karma Kanda, can someone tell what is the trap? Trap means what? You will, have, you will have sense enjoyment. You will have fruitful results. Through that, you will have a sense enjoyment at some point. Uh -huh. In this, in in this in world or in other world? world. Okay. That's it. Trapped in the material world. Staying. Trapped in the material world. Yeah. So his he has uh, unlimited desires to enjoy. You know his desires keep multiplying, multiplying, and he feels this is the goal of life. You know, go to heaven, do some yagya, again go to heaven, come back to you know things like that, and he uh, works out in that manner. That's his trap. You know, it's like in Nana Yoga, there is a trap. Ashtanga Yoga, there is a trap. You know, so like this. So these five things keep in mind, and um, at the end of this uh, sixth chapter, you may have this view. You know, maybe one of you can show it or present also for all of our benefit. So it will make a very good uh, understanding about this five. So I'll repeat. First one is, what is one's identity? What he thinks as his identity? Huh? What he thinks himself as? Second, what is his goal? Third, what is his practice? Fourth, what is the elevating aspect or good part in that particular yoga path? And fifth one, what is the trap, possible trap? So these five things keep in mind and uh, maybe we will evaluate this at the end of sixth chapter. Okay. Prabhuji, I have so one now, question. Oh, yes. Sorry. So the first question that you mentioned, what is the performer of a yoga thing himself as? Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, we don't really know, right, that um, what we are doing and it it has a certain purpose. We just, so sometimes uh, it is done just because it's a tradition and uh, it is a part of the family tradition you are doing it. You don't really think of an end result. Probably sometimes you think that the end result is, uh, at least in Karma Kanda, you are thinking that, okay, by doing all this, you are going to. Uh, uh, going into the mode of goodness or achieving heavenly planets, at least in Karma Kanda, you might know. But does mm. the uh, practitioner of Jnana Kanda really know that he is looking for uh, liberation and he is looking for the impersonal Brahman like that? Do, mm. do they really know or they are just practicing uh, it? This, this is a question that I had. So we have, we have to ask any any person who says that he's practicing spiritual life, we have to ask what is his goal and what is his practice? We have to ask. I then only we understand you. what is his uh, level, what is his stage in the practice. It is in technically called sadhana and sadhya. The goal, sadhya and sadhana, that is the practice. Like suppose we are seeing someone who is reading Gita and we go and ask him, uh, what is your goal of studying Gita? <laughs> you know, one person told that my goal in studying Bhagavad Gita, there is a famous comment on Bhagavad Gita who says this, is to understand how Lord Shiva is supreme. Now one may wonder, in the Bhagavad Gita, where is the word Shiva? You know, there is a famous commentator about this. I recently heard about it. You know, now this is the goal. <laughs> and what he wants to become? He wants to glorify Lord Shiva. Maybe he wants to Merge in Lord Shiva. Usually, people who worship Lord Shiva are Kaivalyavadis. So, the point is this you know, one has to ask that question oneself, or you know, if you see someone who claims himself spiritual, ask this question. You know, somebody may say, How oh, to become happy? You know, happy moments. <laughs> there is a spiritual path called like that. Or, you know, say, You want to live in this world very nice. You know, uh, or uh, just, uh, you know, be kind, you know, so the, the, what is the goal, you know, or what is the practice, when, when we ask this question, we clearly come to that point, we nail down there, actually, what is the like goal, said, what is the practice? You know? yeah, like you said, Prabhuji, like if they are saying that, okay, it is to glorify Shiva, which means that, uh, mm -hmm. so similarly, I have had experiences where I have uh, asked people or even within the family also, they also don't know why they are doing certain things. But they're just yeah. doing that. Okay, that it might, might be for glorification of a certain God. Sometimes it is Ganesha, sometimes it is even Santoshi Mata, and sometimes it is like anybody. But it is to mm -hmm. glorify that. 
uh, a particular uh, god but they don't have which means they don't have any goal for themselves uh yeah so yeah they, correct so that is the lack of goal will not make one fix in that path you know so one who has fixed his goal will at least endeavor that path so somebody who follows family traditions may do it out of respect for elders or fear of so oh, if i don't do this maybe something wrong, wrong will happen to me or maybe i have to fulfill some i know some debt to my uh, pitru or you know something like that so there could be such desires you know such uh, intentions which which may not be very verbal or you know like that but uh, surely the ignorance uh, often there is a lot of ignorance about why we do <laughs> what we are doing you know in that sense but i am talking here mataji about these yoga paths when we say someone you know lord is now going to talk about karma kanda huh? that as the main yes. Uh, so so one should said, know what is sadhana and sadhya. Yeah, please complete. Primary, people who are doing this, do they know that they are in the jnana path and they are in the karma yeah. karma kanda path? Do they know that? Yes. That was yes. They they are surely aware because that's what they speak a lot. You can understand by what they speak, what they emphasize. You know, I I went to one nursing temple where one pujari was worshiping. and he told uh, ultimately prahlad attained moksha that's the most common word actually so one may say according to bhagavata philosophy prahlad did not attain moksha of merging but he attained prema uh, he is in fact a prema bhakta so what chaitanya mahaprabhu established as goal is the highest goal prema pumarto mahan uh, which is very very rarely found very rarely found sometimes even among the people with vaishnava dress we may hardly find this goal so the point is uh, we have to uh, re at least we ourselves can check if, if not for others uh, what is the goal of my practice uh, what is the practice i am doing is it aligning with the teachings of my parampara my guru uh, that we can ask ourselves at least like whenever we go to these mentalities say i i do book distribution with a goal to get more uh, number of books but for what purpose what's the goal to please shila prabhupad or to please my guru huh? or you know see this there are these mentalities which creep even in devotional service so in that sense we can relate you know or sometimes we want to uh, be relieved of certain responsibilities of devotional service why i want to live you know a little peaceful life i don't want to take these anxieties uh, you know so that is a mentality of becoming uh, you know relieved from the anxieties in one sense it's a uh, nana tendency nana kanda tendency you know? so like that so there are these inclinations which may come or sometimes we go for expertise in certain activities which is siddhik uh, impurity so we can ask ourselves at least we can uh, at least i see in that manner that we can ask ourselves uh, keep asking this question what is the goal of what i am doing uh, what is the practice i am doing is it aligning with my uh, parampara my guru's words yes prabhu ji i think that makes sense because that will also continue to realign us in the right path otherwise we mm. might uh, stress yeah, yeah yeah true theek okay. hai so uh, we will continue that shloka 10 the shloka 10 onwards lord is telling uh, the yoga ladder the very first he tells about karma kanda सह यज्ञ प्रजा सृष्ट पुरा वोच पुरो वाच प्रजापति अनेन प्रजापतिष्टकाष्णुंग्लेंगी performance will bestow upon you everything desirable for living living happily and achieving liberation uh, so lord gave this yagna process in the very beginning of creation itself so along with the creation the yagna process was given for all of us you may know this famous uh, vedic mantras prayers purusha sukta which is actually telling about the Uh, the first yagna which happened you know how the creation happened and how the 
and the yajna was performed and by the yajna so many things came you know uh, so much of uh, um, the samrutam prasham adyam hajyam all that you know it comes and uh, all the bra- varna ashramas came all the vedas came all that description is there in that sukta what is, what is told here in this uh, shloka is also that by the yajnas one attains all that is needed for one's life all one's necessities are fulfilled material necessities are fulfilled by the yajna method so prabhupad says in the purport very nice uh, description the material creation by lord of creatures vishnu is a chance offered to the conditional souls to come back home back to god it so the purpose of creation is to come back home back to god it all living entities within this creation are conditioned by material nature what is the conditioning their forgetfulness of their relationship with vishnu so the vedic principles are to help us understand this eternal relation so whatever vedas tell is to make us realize this ha uh, sometimes they may say karma kanda jnana kanda or you know upasana all that so this is all for this purpose so the lord says the purpose of vedas is to understand him he will tell it in 15th chapter huh? so vedas say that patim vishvasyatmeshwaram the lord of living entities is supreme personality of god head vishnu prabhupad quotes a very nice shloka from bhagavatam and this is uh, uh, shukadev goswami uh, who is uh, glorifying lord before starting to speak bhagavatam this is second chapter canto fourth chapter he glorifies lord as the pati of so many things shriya pati yajna pati praja pati dhiya pati loka pati dhara pati patir gathis cha andhaka vrishni satvatam so so many patis mention huh? shriya pati he is the master of all the wealth all the samriddhi yajna pati he is the person who has to be who is the master of all yoga who has to be pleased by the yoga path prajapati he is the one who uh, original progenitor prajapati dhyampati lokapati dhara means the you know, earth itself and andhaka vrishni satvatapati these are the kulas which are yadu kulas andhaka vrishni satvata yadu all these patis and you are the gati also the destination of all this uh, such a lord prasidatam me bhagavan satam pati you are the pati of all the devotees satam so please be pleased on me like that um, shukadev goswami says so prabhupad says uh, in the middle of this purport by performance of yajna condition souls gradually become krishna conscious and become godly in all respects so surely as we saw in the shloka in the ninth one yajna arthat karmana so yajna doesn't mean uh, only the fire and uh, know, offering the ghee or offering the havisha and all that but it in means that offering one's activities uh, for the pleasure of lord for the satisfaction of lord so in that sense uh, the purpose of yajna is one no matter there are different varieties of yajnas uh, in the fourth chapter there are many types of yajnas which will be described at least seven six, eight types of yajnas which will come there but the purpose of all yajnas is to please the lord and prabhupad says the the most uh, uh, possible yajna most effective yajna most powerful yajna in fact uh, for the people of this age is sankirtan yajna which aitanya mahaprabhu told and which is told in bhagavatam krishna varnam dvisha krishnam sango pangastra parshadam yajnai sankirtana prayair yajanti hi sumedhasa so the people of this age of kali uh, who are at least having little intelligence they will worship this uh, wonderful form of lord who is uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, who is krishna but in a different complexion uh, 
he along with his associates he has come and he is worshipped by this sankirtana yagna he is pleased by this sankirtana yagna so that is the uh, prabhupad gives uh, as the final application of this uh, purpose <clears throat> so shri la prabhupad always sets on to give what is most uh, important and what is most conclusive in uh, the bhagavad gita in every purport you know? so that is the speciality of shri la prabhupad's purports yeah. yes any comment question yeah prabhuji um so it says that in the beginning of creation the lord of all creatures sent four generations of men and demigods so and and we also see that uh, we become envy of the lord or say and and that's why we are here in the material uh, world so so does that mean that all these men and demigods at the beginning who were sent were all envious of of lord yeah so those who come to this uh, you know material world have this impure tendency to lord over to enjoy separately uh, you know from lord that's why they come here and once they are once they have they, they have made this choice then lord provides some means okay how they can be rectified okay take this yagna path huh? you will fulfill your desires also and slowly slowly you will realize krishna consciousness like that's the way yeah okay because at the beginning of creation if you look at if i am not mistaken it says like he sent Bra- Bra- like brahma was created and then and then kumaras came and and others came and that's how the whole generation and and the whole process yeah. so does that Correct. mean that even the kumaras and say others who were uh like at the beginning of so they were also with that similar nature of uh, mm-hmm. lording over the material uh nature yeah so brahma is a post so someone yeah, who yeah. has a desire to uh, manufacture or a desire to engineer or you know so that could be uh, that jiva could be given the position of brahma now certain jivas are empowered by lord for a specific purpose you know like kumaras are empowered by lord they are called shaktiya shaktiya vesha uh, like parashurama narada these are all jivas do they appear to come in the beginning of creation is it not but they are empowered by lord for a specific purpose so they are to be seen separate differently actually so in general all the men devas all the devas you can consider including brahma ji also so they are uh, They, when they are created when they in they come in the beginning then the yagna path is given to them and these are all con- seen as conditioned souls in that sense okay is that okay yeah thank you okay okay fine now lord, lord will tell okay if if the yagna is uh, yagna is given in the very beginning of the creation what one does with that yagna devan bhavayata nena te deva bhavayantu va parasparam bhavayanta shreya parama vapsyata read prabhu the demigods <clears throat> being pleased by sacrifices will also please you and thus by cooperation between men and demigods prosperity will reign for all rain for all so these devatas are to be pleased by the yagnas and what will happen by that they will help you fulfill your desires huh. so this is very important to understand in the karma kanda the person comes to the conclusion that if i have to enjoy i have to please someone i am dependent on someone for my happiness huh. so who is that Uh, how superior how supreme is he that is secondary thinking you know uh, but at least he comes to the understand oh i cannot be independently happy i cannot be uh, you know uh, i i can i i cannot be following no regulations and you know uh, rules and yet be uh, happy no so this is one very good aspect is it not compared to uh, you know wanton living or 
whimsical sense enjoyment or like that wherein a person falsely declares himself as not following any rules and regulations uh, but yet uh, he is forced to follow and he tries to be happy <laughs> he declares himself that he is happy but he is in illusion uh, so the best part of karma kanda is that one comes to this understanding that he is dependent on someone some higher powers higher personalities for his enjoyment and he has to please them to fulfill his desires so that is the uh, good part of karma kanda you know so prabhupada yeah. writes huh? small question on this so why do we have to please demigods prabhupada will why write says right. that yeah you need to please and in the next also it says you yeah. like when you please them then by the cooperation you will become prosperous the prosperity will reign and so, so good, why good. why do we do that natural question prabhupada will address this in the first few lines of purport the demigods are empowered administrators of material affairs the supply of air light water all other benedictions for maintaining body and soul of every living entity is entrusted to the demigods uh, mark here every living entity and they are innumerable assistants in different parts of body of supreme personality of god so their pleasures and displeasures are dependent on performance of yagnas actually while performing yagnas what we are telling we are respecting the position of those personalities okay we respect this uh, devata as the one who awards uh, water one who controls the element of water rains all that so we are respecting that position and ultimately we respect supreme lord's authority by respecting that devata that is the uh, key here some of the yagnas are meant to satisfy particular demigods but even in so doing lord vishnu is worshiped in all the yagnas <laughs> you know whatever is the yagna when one sits to perform achman one always starts with keshava narayana madhava go <laughs> and it always ends at the end there is uh, krishna arpanamastu or om purnamada namo brahmanya devaya these all verses are are there very much you know uh, in all the devata yagnas in some at least those who practice those who perform properly one may note that <clears throat> so Uh, it is stated also in bhagavad gita that krishna is the beneficiary of all yagnas bhokta ram yagna tapasam therefore ultimate satisfaction of yagna pati is the chief purpose of all the yagnas so prabhupada tells there will be no scarcity of natural products if one uh, please the devatas by yagnas so uh, it is for our benefit that we respect these personalities superior agents uh, who are actually agents of supreme lord representatives of supreme lord uh, so performance of yagnas has two benefits one is fulfillment of material desires and another is it also awards one progression in spiritual path uh, it ultimately libera- leads to liberation from material bondage so one is getting purified also so uh this famous line is quoted by baladev vidya bhushan aahara shuddhau sattva shuddhi sattva shuddhau dhruva smriti you know smriti lambhe sarva granthina vipra moksha so what is happening in yagna is one's existence is getting purified huh? how just by simple of a method of purifying the food huh? when the purified food is accepted then one's existence starts becoming purified one's uh, memory one's intelligence uh, uh, gets purified and one becomes freed from all bondage so the yagna has many benefits one is fulfilling material necessities or desires whatever uh, expectations one has and second is it helps one to advance spiritually uh, by avoiding the necessary purification and progression like that okay what time are we to end today a- any anything told so prabhuji actually friday we have vyas puja day in our temple stana bits temple ah. did uh, okay. prabhu anybody convey the message 
no no i did not get okay okay maybe i, ah, I will i will talk to prabhu ji prabhu ji hare krishna this lila and das prabhu ah, yes. yeah, yeah. prabhu ji uh, half an hour more if you want to continue today you can because okay. we discussed it right? you wanted to catch up on little and others for whom okay. it is getting late can hear the recording and uh, okay. as far as vyas puja day is concerned bro and uh, i mean some of some of them who are aspiring from isolas radha rat maharaj have a vyas puja in the morning time uh, but in oh. the evening time there is no nothing planned we can continue okay. with our uh, classes if you, if you are available i don't know your schedule mm mm-hmm. theek hai prabhu ji uh, as of now i am available uh, i am at a different place and ceremony is in the morning first yeah, yeah. so yeah. but yet if there is some celebration there uh, let me know we will adjust our schedule accordingly maybe yeah. next week we will make it up for like that no here it is okay bro that's what i'm saying here also we have in the morning time only evening okay. we don't have anything planned oh take it yeah so we'll we'll take little more time today and we'll try to cover some more shlokas yeah sure so now after understanding <laughs> that okay i need to fulfill uh, i need to please some devatas uh, some a superior uh, personalities for my happiness uh, but if i take whatever is available say water light you know uh, or some uh, natural products or wealth and all and i enjoy what is wrong with that what is wrong with that so now lord will address it ishtan bhogan hi vo deva dasyante yagya bhavita ఇన్ఛార్జ్ but he who enjoy such gifts without offering them to the demigods in return is certainly a thief ah uh, are krishna so once shila prabhupad was approached by one glass merchant <laughs> very interesting that is uh, who was very pious person and prabhupad was quoting this explaining this shloka there actually and he was telling how uh, one should actually respect what krishna is providing so once shila prabhupad was approached by this glass merchant so prabhupad was speaking this shloka yo bhungte stena eva sah so this person was telling swami ji i i come and offer so much of uh, service and donations to the temple huh? before that prabhupad was telling this shloka how a person who accepts the uh, natural gifts huh? and who doesn't acknowledge that lord has provided this is actually a thief is actually a thief huh? and uh, when prabhupad heard this glass merchant he saw and he asked him so you are uh, having this glass industry so how do you make glass so that person told i make glass we make glass by using sand silica okay who gave you that sand so he told it is available already in the nature so we use that so but you should know but tell me who who made that sand so then that person was at least pious to understand and answer that yes it was given by god so you are taking something which is created by god but if you don't offer it back to him if you don't acknowledge him then it is considered as thievery you are a chore then he told no swami ji I, i do some seva i give some uh, uh, you know service to the temples you know i offer some charity to the temples like that then he told okay then you are a smaller thief but nonetheless we are thieves <laughs> so what raupad meant is that he accept something which is krishna's creation without acknowledging that okay this has to be used in service of krishna then it is nothing but thievery you know stena that's the word lord krishna uses stena eva sah so uh, one should acknowledge uh, by yagna method 
that's the purpose here told you can see that in the purport the demigods are authorized supplying agents on behalf of supreme god therefore they must be satisfied by performance of yagnas little below it says for one who cannot understand what the personality of god had is sacrifice to devatas is recommended so the devatas uh, the the yagnas for the devatas is recommended for one who does not understand who is the supreme personality uh, as lord krishna and little below it says according to different material qualities different types of yagnas are recommended many according to them like sometimes if a person proper mentions if one has to eat meat then he has to do some worship of say mother kali uh, and uh, he has to uh, accept that he has to do some activity on that amavasya day and he has to keep telling mamsa 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 uh, what it means is uh, you can kill me what i am doing for you now you can do it for me in the next <laughs> and uh, you know he himself has to do uh, like that there are some regulations by which if a person is sensible he will understand oh okay i have to actually you know restrain from this wrong act you know or uh, impious act um, for which i am using the vedas or yagyas so by that one will regulate oneself one will come to a civilized life a proper dharmic life a devotional life so lord is telling uh, so prabhupada is mentioning this as an example in the par and he also says that pancha maha yagna uh, which was traditionally done by all the practically all the people of the society especially grahasthas so pancha maha yagna is uh, uh, to to repay the debt for uh, five personalities five types of personalities who uh, award something or other in one's life uh, there are devas uh, who give so many of natural uh, products say you know say air water uh, many things like that uh, so my my um, the moon gives vegetation vegetation like that so that is devas devatas they are the first ones they have to be pleased then there are uh, rishis who have given so much of the literatures they have given so much of uh, uh, vedic practices rishis they were rishis and uh, bhutas that means so many other jeevas who live around us they are contributing in one's life say some animals some people around all that devas rishis bhutas and then what nandru uh, nara means the people of the family uh, they have also contributed and there are pitrus who are ancestors uh, they have also contributed uh, in one's uh, life or existence so these all have to be uh, all these personalities have to be uh, satisfied by some performance of yagna uh, that's called pancha maha yagna so proper talks about in one of the bhagavatam purports but in bhag uh, proper tells also that if one performs devotional service one is um, satisfying all these five personalities all these five types of personalities so proper writes below one should know that all necessities of life that human society requires are supplied by demigod agents of lord no one can manufacture anything for example whatever we want to eat say grain fruit milk sugar or whatever even non vegetarians want to eat like meat or this nothing is manufactured by men everything is provided by devatas by the superior age agency uh, we cannot even produce one grain of rice prabhupad would tell in the laboratories we cannot we claim so much advanced but can we produce even one grain of rice uh, we only produce nuts and bolts can we subsist on them so prabhupad would ask that question so uh, a little below uh, uh, even for our manufacturing enterprises we require so many raw materials metal sulfur mercury manganese all of which are supplied by agents of lord with the purpose that we should make proper use of them to keep ourselves fit and healthy for the purpose of self realization leading to ultimate goal of life that is liberation from material struggle for existence so what is the purpose of all this arrangement in this world 
which is mentioned here. What's the purpose? Say, suppose we are getting good water, good air, good grains. Uh, uh, we are uh, born in such nice uh, civilized society. Our pitrus have going contributed. For what is the purpose? Going back to Godhead. Going back to Godhead. To say exactly here it mentions to keep ourselves fit and healthy for purpose of self-realization. Self-realization, uh, going back. Yeah. Yes. So little below he says, if you forget the purpose of human life and simply take things uh, from the agents of Lord for our own sense gratification, we become thieves. And Prabhupada makes one very important statement. A society of thieves can never be happy. A society of thieves can never be happy because they have no aim in life. That's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given this Sankirtan again. <laughs> Prabhupada told that. So now next shloka tells far more. Okay, one may say, I don't need yagyas. Arjuna may say, I don't need yagyas because I will be living in forest. I will beg and live. I don't need to work for earning my livelihood or getting these food grains, all that. So I will better live in forest. But the Lord will say, even if you live in forest, whatever you accept, hey Arjuna, if that is not offered to Lord, then it will be sinful. It will be sinful. So if we don't acknowledge Lord in our life, not only that we will be called thieves, but we will become sinful. This is the shloka which will come next, uh, which Prabhupada told to show that how prasad, uh, offering food to the Lord, is a very important part of devotional service. Uh, he would quote this shloka so many times. Yajna shishta sina santo muchyante sarvakil vishai bhunjate te tvagham papa ye pachantyatma karanat. Please read the purport. Sorry, translation. Who is saying uh, this? Sin. Yeah. Like the devotees of the Lord are released from all kinds of sins because they eat food which is offered first for sacrifice. Others mm. prepare food verily uh, eat only sin. Only sin. So, yajna shishta, whatever is the remnant of yajna, huh? so that which is offered to the Lord and that which is given back by the Lord, <laughs> you know, partaken by Lord and given back to us, is actually called Yajna Shishta. So if one takes that, then one is released. Yajna Shishta Shina Santaha. Then what happens to them? Muchyante Sarva Kilbishai. Kilbishai means all the papas are, one is freed from it. And if one does not do it, Bunjate Tetva Agham Papa. So if one, if one does only for Atma Karana, if one is not doing for Yajna Artha, then he is only eating Agham. Agham means Papa. So, Prabhupada tells, he quotes the famous uh, shloka from Brahma Samhita, that when devotees, they offer uh, the bhoga to the Lord, they have this uh, a loving relationship with the Lord. Prabhupada uses the word, the santas being always in a compact of love. You understand what is compact? What is this compact word used here? Any of you could say compact. Compact means a firm agreement. You know, so the devotees have an agreement of love. <laughs> they exchange love. You know? The agreement of love. So what they exchange, whatever they exchange, is love. So that's why we see uh, in that shloka, patram pushpam phalam toyam, bhakti is told twice. Uh, tadaham bhakti upahritam. You know? So what is accepted by Lord is the intent, that is bhakti, which is, which is uh, presented in the form of the article, uh, the item of food, uh, the bhoga. So Lord accepts bhoga when it is offered with love or devotion. Someone would come and question, what is this Prabhupada, uh, Swamiji? Whatever you keep in front of this uh, uh, stone forms is like that only. 
how do you know that it is uh, it is taken by uh, it is accepted by god has someone asked you question like that any of you how do you answer this question how do you answer this question if someone comes and tells that how do you know that god has accepted what you have kept in front of you we are adding tulasi okay you are you are offering tulasi with tulasi so, tulasi okay. and tulasi is so he he definitely likes a tulasi okay okay theek hai that's fine any other answer like this prabhuji at one time uh, at one time even i used to ask this question then the answer uh, that i got was that uh, from one of the i think from leelan and prabhu only he said when you are reading uh, the shlokas you are not really like uh, constructing them the, you are getting the essence of it when uh, when the lord actually looks at glances at the food he can uh, he can taste it and that essence uh, that uh, remnants is uh, uh, purified uh, with the lord's glance and it uh, gets the power the potency of purification of our soul also so that is that is the answer and it satisfied me the answer satisfied me I don't okay. Know okay. Good. Good. Any other answer? Nice. Good answer. Actually, wonderful. Yeah. Any yeah. other uh, view of this? Yeah. Bhakti amsha will be taken. How sincere will be taken? Bhakti amsha will be taken. Okay. <laughs> nice. Nice. All of you are nice bhaktas. So It's like if this. our son, if our son or daughter, a small kid, uh, is offering something, uh, a chocolate which you have given. Uh, he is just offering just like how you feel happy in the same way he just feels happy because we are uh, his uh, children mm. prabhu ji that's yes. a simple yes common true, true. so it's the lord's assurance in bhagavad gita that he accepts yeah we are and that's the faith and of you, devotee <laughs> he, you know and he is so surely it is not perceived by uh, material means you know so prabhupad would say lord is absolute he can eat by his eyes he can impregnate by his eyes he can walk with his you know without moving his limbs so many like this so he is absolute uh, in that sense lord's devotee's faith is that lord has told and if i sincerely offer lord is surely accept uh, so one may question prabhu ji uh, sometimes we offer for few minutes sometimes we bring some items from outside sometimes we you know do in a hurry or like that so all these surely uh, practical situations are there the best type of offering it's told you know i heard from one very senior devotee is that which is uh, grown by devotees that which is harvested by devotees that which is transported cooked and offered uh, by devotees that is considered superior <laughs> that's the best you know at the same time uh, we should at least have a sincerity of intent purpose huh? and we should have that uh, intention very clearly when we go in front for offering the bhoga we offer it uh, and we tell the prayers and we submit ourselves to our guru because he is actually offering it not we are offering <laughs> we are just assisting we are just giving it to our gurus and they offer it and because they are very merciful they are accepting something from us and they will offer it ultimately it goes to shrimati radharani who is most dear to lord krishna and it comes back um, everyone putting their mercy in it and they comes back very power and one can see what the clear effect on consciousness when one accepts food which is offered to lord very consistently Prabhupada makes one very nice statement here. Uh, okay, it comes in the next purport, of course. Uh, <clears throat> how can a person be happy if he is both a thief and sinful? So those who prepare food for themselves, uh, who eat without offering to the Lord, Prabhupada called, or the Lord Krishna tells here, are eating only sin. so not only they are thieves but are sinful so how can a person who is a thief and sinful be happy it is not possible so that is explained here in this purport uh, so in order for people to become happy in all respects they must be taught to perform the easy process of sankirtan yagna 
otherwise there can be no peace or happiness in the world now after this prabhupad will sorry lord will talk about how practically one can see that everything in uh, our creation in our life is provided by lord starting with food annad bhavanti bhutani parjanyat anna sambhavat yagnyat bhavati parjanyo yagnya karma samudbhava prabhu yes sir all living bodies subsist on food grains which are produced from rains rains are produced by performance of yagna sacrifice and yagna is born of prescribed duties uh, so everyone subsists on food grains so food grains are produced by rains rains come from yagna and yagnas come from what is told here karma samudra prescribed duties so what are yagnas are determined by uh, what is one's prescribed duty so for arjuna what is the yagna now to fight to fight in the battlefield is the oh, yagna yeah. for arjuna so that is the prescribed duty for him uh, so prabhupad tells in the purport nice points about how uh, <clears throat> one can become purified uh, by yagna let in the middle of the purport by such action not only are past sinful reactions in body vanquished but the body becomes immunized to all contamination of material nature and prabhupad gives a nice example of antiseptic vaccine you know when there is an epidemic then an antiseptic vaccine protects a person from attack of such an epidemic similarly food offered to lord uh, taken by us makes us resistant to material affection and one who is accustomed to this practice of uh, offering you know the bhoga to the lord and accepting the remnants uh, he is called a devotee of the lord so who is called a devotee in this purport <laughs> one who is accustomed to practice of offering and accepting the remnants back uh, from lord he is called a devotee so the prasada is actually that uh, chavan prash you know that uh, ad shows which gives one immunity from all the germs you know, uh, from the material affection or material infection for that matter so that's very important now this prescribed duties are coming from whom that's a very natural question will come next shloka says karma brahmodbhavam vidhi brahmaksharam samudbhavam तस्मात् सर्वगतं ब्रह्म नित्यं यज्ञे प्रतिष्ठितं रीट्रांसलेशन यस प्रभुजी रेग्युलेटेड एक्टिविटीज आर प्रिस्क्राइब्ड इन द वेदास एंड द वेदास आर डायरेक्टली मैनिफेस्टेड फ्रॉम द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड इट कॉन्सिक्वेंटली ऑल परवेडिंग ट्रांसडेंस इज इटरनली सिचुएटेड इन एक्ट्स ऑफ सैक्रिफाइस हां सो द रेग्युलेटेड एक्टिविटीज आर द ड्यूटीज आर टोल्ड फ्रॉम वेदास व्हिच आर कॉल्ड ब्रह्म हियर and this brahma is coming from akshara akshara is a word used here for supreme lord uh, so ultimately what is being linked here is uh, if a jiva has to subsist uh, he is dependent on food grains that means he is dependent on supreme lord uh, because anna came from rain rain came from yagna yagna came from you know dharma or you know duties and the duties came from shastras that shastras came from supreme lord so the jiva is dependent on food grains that means jiva is dependent on supreme lord so that is the connection which is made here so jiva's dependence on food is actually dependence on lord that's the point which is told when proper tells in purport vedas are therefore the codes of working directions to work in this world they are giving us directions and how vedas come from the breath of the lord and uh, the upanishad say when lord breathes the, they are the actually upadeshas of the vedas you know like that and lastly we will end with the 16th shloka evam pravartitam chakram nanu vartayati haya aghayur indriya ramo mogham parthasa jeevati please read my dear arjuna 
one who does not follow in human life the cycle mm. of sacrifice thus established by the vedas certainly mm. live a life full of sin living sin. only yeah living only for the satisfaction of the senses such a person lives in vain mm. if one does not follow na anuvartayati ha uh, what this chakra of yagna uh, this anna all this yagnas uh, dependence following the vedas then what happens to him he is actually becoming bewildered mogham because he has to incur sin agha agham indriya rama he is involved in the sense gratification due to which he will become uh, bewildered in his life and his life goes in vain he will not be happy he will be inflicted in reactions so lord actually told so far that uh, this fulfilling the material necessities can happen by pleasing the superior agents to start with devatas and one ultimately comes to the point <clears throat> that one uh, offers uh, yagna sishtha uh, one one uh, offers uh, everything for the purpose of yagna uh, and accepts the remnants of the yagna and even the simple aspect of food anna uh, dependence every jiva wants anna for subsisting uh, for you know sustenance uh, and that is possible only when uh, supreme lord awards it uh, so we are dependent on lord for our food so in that sense lord has told that perform the yagna and earn your material necessities uh, so to fulfill our material desires and necessities we need to practice yagna proper always told sankirtan yagna as the ultimate yagna thank you very much Uh, this uh, actually uh, completes this section of 16th but from here now arjuna may say but ar krishna i don't have material desires then why i should fight <laughs> that is the next uh, section which is going to come even though you don't have material desires for arjuna you still have many good reasons to fight we will see that next okay thank you very much श्रीमद भगवद गीता की जय श्री प्रभुपाद की जय हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू हरे कृष्ण पतिता राम पावन अभिनय श्री गुरु नमः